Hi everybody. Today we are going to discuss about another DNS lookup tool called as Dig. Dig is something that can be used from the Linux prompts, Linux or Unix prompts. You can also do Dig from uh, Windows if you have uh, tools like Sigwin installed on it. So this is actually the Sigwin tool and I'm going to use uh, Dig here. Now similar to ns lookup i mean we have a help command when you type in help you get to see all the options and the different things that you can do with ns lookup for dig you have the man pages so you can just have to type in man space dig and that will actually show you all the options that you can run using the take command right so we'll go through this uh, in detail in later sections but let me just uh, start with some of the basic dns lookup queries that you can run. so if i just type in dig space yahoo.com right now you can see here i got a response right so now since I did not mention the query type, I did not mention whether it's an error code query, code ray, I did not mention anything, right? So by default, dig does an error code query. So you see the question section here and, and the query type is A and, and when you see the answer section, you see all the error code responses, right? So if you don't mention any type in the query, right, you, it by default, dig does an error code query and I did not also mention the DNS server to which the query is being sent to I just typed in dig space yahoo.com so that query was sent to the preferred DNS server in in my interface settings so the DNS server was mentioned as 127.0.0.1 so I have, a, I have a DNS server running in that particular IP address in my loopback IP so um, the query was sent to that server and that server gave me the response right now let's say um, I want to send a query to another DNS server a.a.a.8yahoo.com Now the query went to, so if you look at it here, the server changed to a.a.a.8 right? Now the question is still the same and the response that we see here is coming from this particular DNS server because the query was sent to 8.8.8.8 it's not coming from 127 like in the previous case so if you want to change and send the dns queries to another dns server you just have to use the at option and then put in the dns server's ip address so please note that i mean this does not change the dns server settings on your computer this is only for the dig tool you're just emulating a dns query right using the dig tool like we do for ns lookup so you just emulating sending the dns query to another dns server the dns server that is configured in your interface settings still remains the same there there's there are no changes in that now let's say i want to send a code ray query so here by default as i said it's an error code query that is happening so let's say i want to send a code ray query so i just type in eight so after the fqdn after the the fqdn to which the for which you want the answer just type in the type so this is where you need to type in the type and hit enter so now you can see the question section is code ray and you get all the answers the code ray answers the ipv6 answers right let me just change that let's say i want the mx record servers right so this is how it should be done you just type in mx after the fqdn and you can see the question section and the answer section are all the mx record responses so this is how you can change the dns server and also the type in the dig queries right now when you look at the dig response you get to see a lot of information you get to see the status status is basically the response code right now it is no error but there are other response codes like serve fail and next domain right depending on different scenarios you will get that particular response you get to see what are the different flags that are enabled for this particular query and and you get to see the different sections 
right the query section the answer section how many records are there right and and the authority and the additional authority and additional you don't see it here i mean but if you were running a traffic capture you would probably see that in that traffic capture too you get to see the query response time the server and then the other details like when the query was sent so unlike ns lookup when you do a query using ns lookup you just see some basic details right the query and the response unless you enable debug mode in ns lookup dig by default gives you all these details i mean it, it it is by default so that's that's one good thing with the dig command Next, let us look at the different options that DIG provides. Let's start with an option called Dash B. So, it can be typed like DIG, and let me just put add and the server to which the query is being sent to, and then the option Dash B. So, Dash B is actually used to mention the source IP address from which the query is sent out. Now let's say your computer has multiple interfaces, right? And these interfaces have different IP addresses and you want to send the DNS query from a particular interface, not from the default interface, but from another interface. Then you can use this particular command called dash P. So all you have to do is, I mean, just mention the IP address uh, after dash p and then put the domain name or fqdn you want to query and the type. And then the query would actually go out from that particular interface IP address. So let me try to find out what is my IP address. So my IP address is this. So I'll just take a note and take at clears okay dig at a dot a dot eight minus b google dot com okay. so here the query which went to the dns server eight dot eight dot eight was from my interface ip address 192.168.0.3 now you have to ensure that the IP address that you mentioned here is an actual IP address of an interface in your computer let's say I, I put some other invalid IP address dot one dot five right that's not an IP address in my computer so I'll get this particular error address not available right so make sure that the IP address is a valid IP address if it is a valid IP address then the queries the DNS query will be going out using that source IP address now the next option that I am going to talk about is dash C so let's let me take the man page of take So dash C actually tells you or actually gives you an option to change the class of the DNS query. Now, as you all know, the default class of DNS queries, I mean, it's, it's for DNS is IN or the in class, right? That is the class that is used nowadays. But if you want to change the class to, let's say, HS for SEOD or CH for chaos net records, then this is how you need to set the class. Otherwise, all all the queries would be sent out using the IN class. Sketch not sure if I'll get a response. Got a response. It's because we send the so you can see here when I send a query using ch, the query type or the question, no, not the query type in the question field, you can see 
the class mentioned as ch but if i did not mention any class here then in the question section you can see the class in which the query was sent was in and an in is the default default class next uh, let us discuss about another option called as dash f so let's go to the man page for dig so this is dash f so what this option does is you can actually put the domain names in a file let's say you you want to do queries for 10 domain names right you can put those 10 domain names in a file and reference that file in the dig command and the dig will use the inputs from that particular file to do the queries so let's test it out so let's create a text file put some domain names in it and let's read that file so now you can see that there are three domains three domains there were three domains okay let me just do one more time so let's, there are two domains okay uh, and let me do the query So now when you see, you can see that, okay, the domains that were mentioned in the file were yahoo.com and google.com. So you can see that the initial query that was done for was yahoo.com and after that the query was done for google.com. So this is how you can do queries for multiple domain names. All you have to do is just create a text file, put the domain names in it and then reference that text file using the dig command and dig will take the inputs from that text file and, and then do the DNS queries. Let's now look at another uh, dig option. Dash X. Now this is useful when you're doing PTR queries. Now all of you know that a PTR query is actually like let's say your IP address is 192.0.2.94 then the PTR record is actually the inverse it, it is the, the, the inverse of that IP address then followed by dot in dash ADDR dot ARPA. So let's say you want to do a DNS query or a PTR query for this particular record then you have to do or you have to type in like this right for example take at a dot a dot a dot eight and let's say I want to do a reverse lookup for this particular IP address then what I have to type in is a dot a dot a dot eight dot in dash a d d r dot arpa Okay. I didn't mention the type so it was doing so here um, the error that I did was I didn't mention any type so by default as I said earlier it was doing an error caught query now I mentioned the type as PTR so now it did a PTR query for that name for that particular PTR record and I got the response back so this is the IP to name resolution or the PTR record query now this is a bit tedious I would say right I mean you have to write in the complete thing like this so that is where the dig uh, or the minus X option would come into picture so now what you have to do is all you have to do is type in dig at put the server dash X put the IP address and put the IP address and the IP address format itself right now you do a query so you can see that even though I mentioned the IP address here, I did not mention any in dash uh, in dash i e d r dot arpa. What dig did, did is, if you look at the question section, it actually reversed the IP address and it also added the 
in dash addr dot arpa and it also did a ptr query i did not mention any type here so that's how useful the dash x option is for reverse query so let's say i want to do a reverse query for another ip address okay so now you can see that okay 4.2.2.2 was like reversed into 2.2.2.4 dot in dash addr dot arpa and it was a ptr query that it was done and in the answer section you have the ptr response so this is the fqdn for that particular ip address so this is how useful the dash x option is so now i feel that i mean all of you know how or how you can use the dash x and also the dash f options The next options that I'm going to talk about are minus u and minus v. So let's take the man pages again. So minus u is used to print query in microseconds now by default it is in milliseconds but if you want to query or if you want to do the response time in microseconds you need to use the mine dash u option dash v is used to show the version number the dig version number if you want to know right so let's type minus v so this is the dig version number that is currently installed so let's say dig at a dot a dot a dot eight yahoo dot com minus u so you can see the query response time right this is the time that is needed for the query to return a response the record response right so now as you can see it is mentioned as microseconds but if you don't give that option it will be shown in milliseconds so this is the option that can be used I mean for, for troubleshooting scenarios where you want response times in microseconds the next command we are going to look at is plus trace so what is trace now as you know in the dns resolution process it goes through the root and then the tld servers and then the authoritative servers to get you the answer right now for troubleshooting purpose if you want to trace that particular path and find out from where all the responses came in right you can use the plus trace option this is similar to the trace route command where you trace the ip right when you do a ping you want to know the path through which the packet flowed so you use, use the trace route command so similarly in dig the plus trace can be used so let's take an example plus trace okay okay so let me just go to the top now you can see that the first queries are actually sent to the root right so the query was sent to the root for yahoo.com so these are the the 13 root servers right and the 13 root servers one of the 13 root server gave the name server records for com because it did not have an answer for yahoo.com so it gave us a response for or the name servers for com so the root server who gave us the response was this particular server d dot root right now the query was sent to one of these com servers and that com one of the com server gave us the name servers for yahoo.com so the server which gave us that response was this particular server k.gtld so that is the server who gave us this response for yahoo.com again yeah the the com server does not have the record for yahoo.com so it gave us the name server record for yahoo.com now in the next step we send the query to one of the 
name servers for yahoo.com and that is when we got the actual answer back the initial question was the error record query for yahoo.com and that is what we see here and the server which gave us the response was ns1.yahoo.com right so this is a complete process so plus trace option can be used to trace how you got the answer right now if you don't use that you just get the a record response for yahoo.com right but how did you get this response back right now um one thing that you have to keep in mind is now I, I did the trace from my computer so the the trace that you see here is actually my computer doing this and getting the response right but if you want to find out okay how this particular dns server now the response that i get here is from this particular dns server so if, if i want to find out the path that this server took to get me the answer you have to do the trace from that particular server not from your system right for troubleshooting purposes so this is how you need to use the trace command right so you get to see the the path that the dns query took to get you the actual response the next command that i am i'm going to show you is now in ns lookup you have the ls command which can be used to display the the zone contents right now for dig you what if if you want to get the zone contents into a text file what you can do is point it to the dns server type in the domain name type in axfr right now if you just type in axfr and hit enter you, you will see all the zone contents here but remember that the zone transfer setting should be enabled on that particular dns server to the client or the system from which you are running this query if zone transfer is not enabled like in this case if i do axfr i'm just going to get a response that it failed right because zone transfer is not enabled but if zone transfer is enabled to the system ip address then i would get the complete zone records for yahoo.com right now if i just run this command here i'll just show uh, or i'll just get the uh, the results displayed in this particular um, command prompt but if i want to write it to a file all i have to do is by uh, put this the greater than sign and then type in a file name whatever it is right and hit enter so what happens is a file called test.txt is created and if you look inside that file you can actually see the contents now in this case the I mean zone transfer was not working because i mean it, it is not enabled to my ip address uh, from this particular dns server but if it was enabled all the zone contents would have been in this particular file so this would be useful for troubleshooting purposes i mean if you want uh, to see or download the zone contents right and if you want to like let's say migrate the zone data to another dns server and you want to quickly download the text file uh, the the zone records into a text file you can probably use this particular command so these are the two commands uh, that i was going to show in this particular session plus trace as well as uh, the option to download the zone data to a text file So now let us look at the minus p option. So as you all know, the DNS port number is 53, right? Port 53. But so there would be some DNS servers who would be running the DNS service on a non-traditional or a non-standard DNS port. Let's say, for example, port number 444. right now if we send a dns query like this 8.8.8.8 now if we send a dns query like this the query is sent to port number 53 so this the what you see after the hash is actually the port number so it is sent to port number 53 of this particular dns server 8.8.8.8 but Let's say in this server the DNS service is not running on port number 53 and let's say it is running on port number 444 if we send a query like this you are not going to get a response back because there is nothing there is no DNS service running on port number 
So that is why you have another option called dash P and you just have to put in the port number there. Uh, I'm not going to get a response here, but I'm just showing you. So this is how you need to do a query to a non-standard port. So you can mention whatever port number it is. So let's say it's port number 444 that is running the DNS service on 8.8.8. You need to mention that particular port number here. So here I'm, I'm not going to get any response because I mean the DNS service is not running on 444 on 8.8.8.8. The next uh, option that we're going to discuss is plus no recurse. Now, all of you know that by default, DIG does recursive queries to whoever the DNS server, DNS server mentioned here, right? So now if I do a DNS query right now to 8.8.8.8, yahoo.com, it is actually a recursive query that goes to this particular DNS server. But let's say I want to do a iterative query or a non-recursive query, then I need to put a plus no recurse. This is how you need to do a non-recursive or an iterative query, right? So you can look at the uh, the flags, right? So earlier when I was doing the query, it was a recursive query. So when you look at the flags, you could see this particular entry. This is RD is actually recursion desired. So that particular flag was actually set. So that was why it is mentioned, RD is mentioned here. So, but when you do plus no recurse, you don't see RD here because the RD flag or the recursion desired flag was not set. So that was why it was, it is not shown here. Another option that I wanted to talk about is plus VC. Now, all of you know that uh, by default, the query, when you do a query like this, it, it is a UDP query, a UDP query done to port number 53. Now, for let's say testing purpose or if you want to send a TCP query, so what you need to do is you need to do a plus and then VC. So the query that, that went out right now, right, to this particular DNS server 8.8.8.8 on port number 53, it is actually a TCP query. So this is how you need to do a TCP query. Now, the areas or, or troubleshooting options is like, let's say you you are a DNS server and you want and you want to check whether TCP port 53 is open to another DNS server. All you have to do is send a query from your DNS server, the CLI of your DNS server using the plus VZ option to the other DNS server. If you're getting a response back that that shows that the TCP port number 53 is actually open between these two DNS servers, right? Um, and another troubleshooting scenario is, let's say um, there is a zone transfer failure between a primary and a secondary DNS server right and all of you know that for zone transfer to work tcp 53 tcp port number 53 should be open between the two dns servers because the actual zone transfer axfr or axfr it happens on tcp right so then you can do a tcp query between the the secondary and the primary right if you're getting a tcp response that shows that the tcp port number 53 is open between the primary and the secondary dns server if you're not getting any response, if you're getting a response like no servers could be reached, like what we saw earlier here, like like this, then that shows that I mean there is some issue uh, on the network, um, or probably on the DNS servers too. There might be some IP tables blocking the TCP communication, so that that would need further research. But this is some basic troubleshooting things that you can do using Take.